Hi and welcome to another review from Crest 47 Peter and this is going to be the last review of 2014 don't worry there's still going to be reviews in 2015 of course but this is just going to be the last review of the year we are currently in which of course is 2014 and so we're going to have a look at a model that I've been meaning to look at for a while now this is not only something brand new but this was a Christmas present and so I've only now really got around to having a look at it it's made by Batman as you can see by the logo on the box and it's in the old style Batman packaging with the polystyrene tray and well there's no guesses to what we are looking at because you've read the title so you know what it is and also you should be able to tell what this is by looking at it it's the Mournsaw N class now I'm sure some of you are thinking well hang on a minute that's not an N class that's a U class they are both very similar locomotives, but the main difference is with the two is that the U-Class has bigger driving wheels, basically. And, but apart from that, though, they are basically similar. Although the U's started off as the K-Class tanks, but then later after an accident, they got rebuilt into, well, the U-Class and tender engines. Well, the first U-Classes were rebuilt from the K-Class anyway. But that's not really the case with the ends. And they are 260s, so they are moguls. Anything that has a 260 wheel arrangement is a mogul, trust me. And this locomotive is a mixed traffic engine. So it can pull basically well. We all know what it means. She can pull either coaches or wagons. Um, however, the photograph shows this locomotive in BR line black livery. Now, this photo is misleading because that is not the livery, this model is in. Excuse the yellow sticker there, I don't know why it's there. Uh, the number of this loco is 1864 and it's in the Malachite Southern Green livery. So it's alright if you get a model that's in BR line black because then the photo is not misleading so that's fine. But if you get one in a different livery then it is misleading because if it's on a shelf like that for example people are going to naturally think it's in BR line black until they look on the side of the box. But anyway Let's get this model open and see what it's like. So there's the usual standard Batman box. We'll put that to one side. Then here's the card insert for the loco. I should actually mention now, I did open the box up earlier just to have a look at it, but I've not opened it yet. Um, so that's a blonde moment I've just had. I forgot to put this back in. This is the this is the instructions for the N class, the first and only. It's the usual stuff though. So I'll put that to one side to put in the folder of instructions later. But here's the usual. Well, when I say usual, you don't really get them now. But in, back when Batman did this polystyrene packaging, you got these card inserts with a photo on. And on the back you get a bit of brief history, but I'm not going to bother with the brief history in this review because I think people are more interested in the model and the review, so... If you want some brief history, then you can just do some research on the internet. And so there's the model. She's not wrapped in any tissue paper, but then it doesn't really need to be, to be honest. There are some details in here though. So I'll just get them out. Oh well. Well first of all, what's this? Which is quite curious. I have no idea in the slightest what this is. Because I've never seen them before. This is the first time I've had a... Well, it's the first time I've seen one of these in a model I've had. And I have no idea what it is. Is it a free key fob that they're giving away? You know, if, if they didn't put them in other models, then why is this specific model got this in it? Is it some sort of security tag to stop people from stealing the model or something? I don't know. I don't know what it is. If any of you know, comments below. I mean, it could be a security tag, but then this is the first time I've come across it, so if I could do it with this model, why not with all the others? I mean, it looks like one of them things that you attach to your curtains or something. You know, I mean, I have no idea what it is. It's the first time I've seen it. So it's probably nothing majorly special, but then I don't know why it's in there anyway. Mm. 
we'll put that to one side. So here we have all this a piece of paper. Yeah, it's nothing basically interesting. So I'll put that to one side. So it's basically the bright rods to fit under the tender and the loco, and you also have the oh, you have some vacuum pipes, and you've got these curious bits of plastic here. They're basically just plastic poles. Oh, I've dropped it. So I don't know what they are. As you can see there, I'm not pointing to the brake pipe. I'm pointing to this bit of detail there. I have to look into that. And then in here, there's some other details, which is yes, of course, it's the steps for the front. So that's nice. I'm not sure why it's wrapped in a separate bag, but there you go. Okay, so we'll put them to one side to glue onto the loco later. And so all we do now is to get the loco out. Like so. Ah yes, I think I know what those details were that I was on about that are described as plastic poles. I think they go into the coal load because there's two holes there. So I'm assuming that they go into there, into those holes. I think they are anyway. I'm probably wrong, but I'm pretty certain that that is what they're there for. Well, so I've moved the camera closer so now I can have a look at it. Okay, well, first of all, you will notice that the tender is attached to the loco, but it doesn't seem like you can actually detach the tender. Which is quite a surprise, to be honest, because usually with most models, you can detach the tender. And so, this model, you can't seem to do it. By the looks of things, which is a bit of a disappointment, because now I'm going to have to hold the loco and the tender together. Because, you know, usually I detach the tender so I can have a look at the detail more easily, but in this case, you have to excuse me if it's a bit more tricky to do, but I'll do the best I can. So, first of all, we'll talk about the weight. It is very heavy, but well, that's what you want. Because if this loco has no weight, she will not be able to pull anything. So the weight is a good start. You also have sprung buffers on the front, of course. And the back. So those that like sprung buffers, they'll be very happy. There's also rivets on the buffer beam as well on the front. The hole at the front there, that's where the brake pipe goes into. You've got the running number on the front. One eight. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on a sec. That's odd. It says on the box the number is 1864. But the running number of this locomotive is 1854. <laughs> so I think they've got something wrong there. And that's quite curious. I've never seen that before. <laughs> but anyway continue. You've got lamp irons on the loco as you can see on the running board at the front. And there's also one at the side there of the smoke box. You've got separately put on handrail at the top of the smoke box. The smoke box itself does not open but then it doesn't really need to, to be honest. Then you've got the smoke deflectors that do have some separately put on small handrails and there's rivets on there as well. There's rivets on the cylinders as well, and there's even lining on them. Drain cocks are already fitted, so that saves you a job. The coupling it is removable, but it does not have an M socket. It's got a screw in it, as you can see there. But you can still take it out if you wish. I will leave it in, well, temporarily, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this double heading with the skills class, which is in the same livery that this loco is in so that will look really good but that will just be a one-off video after that I will take out that front coupling so that's a video that's going to be done in the new year and of course being that now my model railway action videos they are now going to have sound effects in them so that will look really good also just look at the valve gear and the link motion and the side rods I can't wait to see all that moving and the wheels, they're lovely green as well. The livery, it's spot on. 
you know I just love the green especially with the yellow lining as well around the boiler and the cab as well and you've also got it on the tender alongside the tender body but you got it on the steps as well and on the well the frame of the tender yes of course and you've even got lining around there as well that looks really nice and the axle box is the painted black as well and so are the springs so that looks really nice there are some small put on handrails on the tender as you can see there's no rivets on the body but then that's accurate for this class of loco although that said there are some there are some rivets at the front here and on the bottom but on the tender body itself there's no rivets it's basically well it's non riveted that coupling at the back though that does have a dovetail connector so that can be removed you've also got hooks at the front on the tender and the loco so you can put a chain link one on if you wanted again that's the hole where the brake pipe goes into you got lamp irons on the back and the steps which the crew can climb up onto and to the water filler cap which is where the water goes into of course there's more put on separately put on handrails on the tender as well as you can see and again the tender wheels are green which is nice as you can see that's where the brake rods go into by all these small holes here which they basically keep into I tend to glue them into place so they don't come out and then there's the well it would help if the tender could be detached from the loco but in this case but you can't you can just about see that there are rivets on the face plate of the tender just there on the beam you've even got the handles where the water is transferred from the tender to the boiler you've got all those storage cabinets and there's some coal in the small chute there which speaking of the coal in this case it's non-removable which is quite a surprise to be honest but there you go you could still put real coal on it though but you just have to be careful you'd have to scatter it on the top the southern lettering which is the sunshine lettering it's spot on just look at the embossed on it that looks really nice the cab detail it's not painted but you can paint it yourself but the detailing is there though you just cannot see it that well and I will get it painted myself well I'll try to anyway you've got the running number there crispy printed on with the embossed on as well there's even some rivets on the cab simply put on handrails going all the way down the boiler you've got the dome and this pipe work that goes down from the dome that is the reversing lever I assume there the running board there's rivets on that which is nice you've got glazing in the cab windows the safety valves on the whistle they're put on separately and there's glazing in the cab windows I think I've already mentioned that but I'm gonna mention it again anyway then there's handrails coming down alongside the cab or grab irons as some people call them there's rivets on the cab too and then on the other side well detailing is, detailing is more or less the same ah there's the reversing lever so what's that bit of detail then I don't know it looks like another reversing lever well it looks like that to me anyway as you can see there's some more rivets on the smoke deflectors and there's even rivets on the cylinders You've got more put on handrails and pipe work on the boiler. And there's some rivets there as well. Of course, it's basically the same level of detail as on the other side, basically, so it's not much different. And of course, you've got the chimney as well, we can't forget that. Now you could put a smoke generator unit in there if you wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. So, all in all, I think she's a very nice model. My only criticism is the fact that the tender cannot be separated from the loco because it would have made the review more easier to do but I think I've done the best I can to be honest reviewing it with the tender attached to it and it would be nice if the coal was removable but other than that though she's still a great model and a welcoming addition to the fleet so all that's left to do now really is to
put the loco on the tracks and see how she runs. Okay, so here at the layout, and we're going to put the end class onto the track. Excuse my joint hands. So we'll put the loco on first, then the tender. And so she's on. Oh god. Sorry about that there. Okay, so power is turned on, let's give her a bit of a wiggle. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so let's get her going. Well, that is actually really smooth running. There's no grinding noises or jerky movement. Just look at that valve gear and link motion moving. That is really smooth. Which is what we want it to be, of course. So she's passing under the bridge over the level crossing, which there are going to be some gates fitted on that, because I've got some now. And she's been through the tunnel, so she'll appear at the other end. Passing the yard with these wagons of slice. I feel, didn't it? If that made any sense. Passing the signal box and the station where all the passengers are waiting for the next train, which is delayed. Though they may have to catch the replacement bus service. Passing the seaside, yes, there will be some detail on there eventually. And you have to excuse that fence knocked over in the wall though, that'll be fixed. And excuse the cars as well, it looks like people have been drunk and have had an accident. As you can see, here's the pannier and the coaches from the railway children train pack, parked upon shed. And here is the a4 Silver Fox that you saw in that how-to video, which is also brand new, but it's not going to be in a review. But you will see it in upcoming videos, trust me, but she has just been run in and ran, waiting for her first train of duty. And so there's the end class. Let's just come back round again. So before we get her coupled up to a train, we'll get some close-up shots of her. Okay, well, this is just something I'm going to show you. Uh, usually I'll start off with the locomotive not running before I start it up. But as you can see, I've got the end class. Right, well, it's now the next day. Doesn't look like it to you on the video, but trust me, it is the next day. And that's because we've had to do a bit of maintenance on the track. As you can see, the level crossing has now got some gates on it, finally. So it now looks a bit more realistic. Over here, you will notice that this track has been... High end up a bit. Yep. The end class is now a bit noisy. She's pulling this rack of seven Pullman coaches. And we've had to do this because, well, as you can see, there is some card under there. And that is because the, the track was a bit uneven. Because it had like a bump at the top. Like a bit of a slope hill sort of thing. So that card has been 
put under the track to make the track more level and it has helped quite a lot. It's made a huge difference. Because before that N class wouldn't even get out of the tunnel with this regular Pullman coach, it's but now she does. The three of these Pullman coaches I should point out are the ones from the Cunarder train pack. I've had the roofs painted white on them. So they look more realistic and better with the other Pullman coaches. I know you could get some ones with grey roofs but it helps them to blend in with this rake a bit. I do have a rake of eight actually, but I've not bothered with, with putting that coach on, to be honest with you. And because the reason is because racks of coaches are going to get longer. The vast majority of them are only four. Yes, this N class can do it. As you can see. She keeps going. Um, but racks of coaches are going to get longer. and um, There's not really a lot of racks that are going to get longer. Um, the chocolate and cream stock is a long enough rake, so is the Pullman coaches. And the maroon coaches is a long enough rake as well. So it's just mainly the teak coaches that we're going to extend to about seven. The southern region coaches and the BR blue and grey coaches. And also the... Jid for our coaches. So this proves that this locomotive can just about manage the seven coaches. Eight she struggles with, but she can pull seven. I know that seeing this N class mobile on these Pullman coaches is not very realistic, but you know, it's just mainly a test of strength, really. As you can see, there's a couple of people that have fallen over. I have to sort them out later. One thing I should point out, though, is that I have had a little bit of trouble with the tender derail for some reason. So I may have to look at that later at the end of this video, off camera, of course, when I've done the filming. I think because the tender might be a bit light, I mean, it, she isn't having that problem now, but the tender has derailed a couple of times. But other than that though, it's still a really nice model, I think, quite easily. As you can see, yes, the tender's derailed there, actually. And in some cases, once that tender derails, the front coach there also derails. It's not all the time, but it does happen on occasion, so that might have to be looked at. I think what it could be is the way the tender's been connected to the low cup, so I honestly don't think it's brilliant. Because in terms of going around corners, I think the mechanism that's used to swing it, like that metal pole, is a bit stiff. Well, I'm calling it a metal pole, I should say a metal bar, sort of thing. As you can see, the tender is derailed there again, just slightly. In some cases, that re rails itself. Oh yes, one thing I should point out, condensation. I've had a bit of trouble with that. Um, thankfully, it's not affected any of my models, but the fact is, there are some areas where it has gone over there. It will dry out so it won't wreck anything, but you know, it is a bit of a pain in the backside though. So what I'm going to do, and what I'm planning to do, is fitting a paraffin heater, because that helps to prevent condensation. And so I will be doing that because, you know, well, this condensation is just ridiculous. I've had to wipe it over with a cloth, which is just the way it works. And it has helped it for the time being, all bad focus. Now this is a HD camera, and just look at the focusing on that. Ugh. So yeah, that condensation has been sorted out for the time being, but I don't think it's going to fix it permanently. So I will have to get a heater for it. So all in all, she is a nice model. Yes, for granted, this particular model is not without its problems, such as the tender derailing. The fact that the tender can't really be removed, and the coal isn't removable either. 
But those things taken to one side, she's not really a bad model. I mean, as you can see in this video, this model is just about capable of hauling seven coaches. So, conclusion, she is worth getting. I mean, the more recent one they brought out was the BR line black one that was weathered. But they do make a great addition to your layout. Especially if you get southern region locos as well. So she's worth getting. Despite a few niggles, which can be fixed, I'm sure. So that's basically it really, there's not much else to say. If you want one of these models and you get to get one, and you're planning on getting one, then get one. There's nothing stopping you.